This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president and CEO of Midas Gold, Mr. Stephen Quinn. Stephen, how are you this morning? Very good, Gerardo, and thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming on. The inspiration uh, behind the conversation today is I've had multiple subscribers write in asking about Midas and I have to giggle and I've said this in the past because they always comment and, 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 and when they write in, they comment how this is the boring period and what if any catalysts are in the works uh, for Midas, right? And so aside from gold at being at 19.25 an ounce, I always go over the many milestones that we should be expecting um, here soon. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity to have you on to talk about the multiple near-term catalysts for Midas. Um, that includes the comment period coming to an end here on October 28th, I believe. I want to explain to people how they can get involved and voice their support for what I believe is one of the best gold deposits, undeveloped gold deposits in North America. But we'll, we'll talk feasibility study. And before we get into all of that, I just want to give you an opportunity to kind of set the table there, Stephen, and give us a little overview of everything that's going on. And then let's take it step by step. Sure, I certainly will. You know, and uh, maybe it's a good opportunity to remind listeners that, um, you know, Stib Night is a, you know, is a very large, high-grade open pit with a significant amount of production, you know, in the sort of 350 to 380,000 ounces a year over at least a dozen years, making it one of the largest, lowest cost gold development projects out there. And, you know, we've been in, you know, as I often call it, permanent purgatory for the last four years, <laughs> you know, waiting to deliver some milestones. Um, but in August, we delivered a mi major milestone with the, uh, draft environmental impact statement coming out. And that sort of really started as down the sort of final track to getting things um, finally permitted and out the door. Well put. Let's talk about the feasibility study. You expect that here in a couple of months, as you mentioned. And we also expect to see for the first time in quite some time, I would imagine the use of some higher gold prices, some 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 scenarios that factor the new environment in. Is that is that accurate, Stephen? Yeah, for sure. So the feasibility study we've announced is uh, scheduled to come out in Q4. Obviously, we're already into Q4, so it's within the next couple of months. Um, and um, you know, obviously, it will be significantly updated, um, but primarily in respect to the gold prices you mentioned, because you know, we're permitting off the pre-feasibility study, you know, the project isn't going to be significantly different to what we're permitting. Otherwise, we'd have to restart permitting, and that wouldn't be good. Right. Um, so the project, you know, from a 50,000 foot view will look very similar. It's a 20,000 ton a day milling operation, you know, producing, you know, that 340, 380,000 ounces of gold a year, you know, so a dozen-ish years of life, three pits, you know, those kinds of key parameters stay the same. And I think that, you know, the two big external differences are, um, you know, number one, the tax rates in the U.S. Um, when we did the pre-feasibility study, uh, the tax, the federal income tax rate was 35 percent. It's now 21. That would obviously be a big win because people immediately come back and said, well, what if Biden wins the election? Well, he's already publicly stated that he would anticipate the tax rate going to 28 well, that's still a 7% reduction from where we were at 35%. So it's a win-win, you know, in either scenario from a, a tax rate perspective, um, you know, that we would see, a, you know, a reduced tax rate, which obviously should be helpful to the economics of the project. But uh, as you mentioned, you know, the biggest driver is this is a gold mine. And so a higher gold price, you know, will have a significant impact uh, on the economics of the project. So we did the previous ability study back in 2014 at 1350 gold. We did scenarios that took us up to, uh, you know, sort of 1650 gold, uh, which seemed like a really optimistic scenario <laughs> when we did that. Right. Um, and obviously we're significantly above and have been much higher than that in recent months. Um, and so, you know, the challenge with volatile metal prices is what do you put the pin on? Pin on? So, you know, we have to identify a base case and we'll do that. And, 
undoubtedly be higher than the 1350 we used in, in the pre-feasibility study. But what we'll essentially do is provide a range of gold prices so people can, you know, sort of pick their own uh, gold price and then, um, you know, look at the valuation of the company in, the, in that gold price environment. You know, because if you just pick one scenario, well, you're going to be out of date the day after you publish. And giving this broader range that takes us up to, you know, high prices like we've seen in the last few months and low prices like we saw back in the PFS days, will give people a sort of maximum, um, you know, opportunity to look at the, the, the leverage of the project to different goal prices. And obviously, higher goal prices will have a positive impact on you know, economics. One of the reasons why I've always been a strong supporter of Midas is the fact that the project works at much lower prices, and I don't expect lower prices. I'm I'm pretty clear about the fact that I believe you know this this new nineteen hundred dollar gold price environment is going to be kind of the base case scenario moving forward, and I expect prices to be higher um, than they are today. But it doesn't necessarily have to play out that way for Midas Gold and Stibnite to be a very, very profitable mine for at least a dozen years. And I can make a pretty compelling and I have argument that that there is enough at Stibnite for this to be a project that delivers for decades on end. Can you speak to the cost parameters of the project? Because they're they're compelling. You know, everyone talks about higher gold prices and optionality and how great these deposits might be if gold just gets to $3,000 and Midas and Stibnite doesn't really need higher prices. They're welcomed, of course, but we don't need it for this to work and to work in a robust fashion. Sure. So, yeah, we did, um, you know, scenarios in our pre-feasibility study that, you know, went down to $1,200 an ounce and still provided a good return uh, on the project. And our oil and sustaining costs are in the $600 an ounce range. So even at $1,200 an ounce gold, you've got a, you know, 100% margin hmm. um, on your cost of production. So it sort of really illustrates the, uh, you know, the robustness of the project. And that's really driven by grade. Um uh, you know, it's going to be up around uh, one and a half gram, 1.6 grams life of mine. But the other year is where, you know, we're mining around two grams a ton gold open pit, you know, with a pretty modest strip ratio. And so that's going to be, you know, it's really what drives the low operating cost is great. Yeah, and obviously scale as well. I mean, there's a sizable deposit. So you get the economy of scale with good grade. You know, that's definitely going to give you a, a pretty robust scenario. The other way that we mitigate risk here is through the designation of, of the project. Um, I believe it's been designated a high priority infrastructure project. I've been you know, pretty expressive about the bipartisan support that the project has received. I believe that's what will lead to a favorable permitting decision. Um, can you speak to the antimony aspect of the project. It's a gold project. That is the dominant metal here. But the antimony absolutely has helped move forward and expedite, I believe, the the, the permitting process, despite the many delays, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, antimony has been declared a critical mineral by the Department of Interior. Um, and um, it's definitely attracted more interest than just its economic clout would suggest. You know, it's a it's a byproduct. Um, you know, that produces about five ish percent of our cash flow. But we would be the only domestic mining producer of antimony in the United States. There's basically none in North America. It's a Chinese Russian dominated commodity. Um, but it's essential for the defense sector, energy sector, many other sectors as well. And and that's why it was designated um you know, as a critical mineral, and because antimony was designated as a critical mineral, and we are the only project out there that has a reasonable prospect of production in anything like a reasonable time frame, you know, it had ended up, as you as you mentioned, the project being designated a high-priority infrastructure project. And what does that mean? Essentially, it means improved coordination and collaboration between the federal agencies to get the project through the permitting process. And, you know, you look back and permitting in the U.S. seems to take forever and, you know, there's much more 
time consuming than in other jurisdictions, you know, but, you know, we're definitely seeing a lot of attention to the project, you know, from, you know, significant, uh, you know, levels of the agencies uh, because of the critical minerals aspect. So it brings another layer of attention to it um, because of its potential to address, you know, strategic interests of the United States. And I think that's, a, you know, a positive, you know, viewpoint that, you know, helps the overall project move forward. The public comment period concludes on October the, the 28th, and it's incredibly important for everyone in the space that wants to support responsible mining and a project and a team that actually will leave the site in better condition than when you found it, right, Stephen? I, this is, frankly, a unique project in that sense. How can people take the five minutes that it takes to comment and opine in support of this project. Um, how, how, how can people get there? Sure. And it, you know, it's worth reiterating, you know, we often talk about economics, Gerardo, but you know, this is an environmental good works project. Mm. You know, this site was the largest antimony tungsten mine in the United States during the second world war, Korean war, but it left a huge amount of um, mess and impact behind and our project is designed to remediate and address all of that impact. And so it's, it's not just an economically good project with lots of jobs and taxes and benefits to investors, but it's also environmentally a good project. And it's therefore important that the public comment during this comment period. And so we're, um, you know, about 70 days into uh, that comment period. There's roughly a week left to go till October 28th. And it's really important that investors, whether they be investors directly in Midas or just in the mining sector, hear um, the regulators hear the voices of investors, that they're, they want to see mineral production in, in the U.S. They want to see projects permitted. They want to see strategic metals produced. They want to see a site cleaned up. And so it's very, we've made it very easy. We have what we call a comment letter starter. And so you just go to um, www wcountidahoin.com and a draft letter will pop up and every time anybody logs in a different letter pop, pops up and so if you don't like that letter you just uh, just sign in again to that same website www.countidahoin.com and a different letter will pop up and then every letter is individualized or can be individualized um, so you can edit the text you can add your own text you can add other points in that you believe the regulators uh, should, uh, you know, hear from you, and then you just press send, and it goes through to the regulators. And so the whole process, from logging in to pressing send, will take you three to five minutes. If you go to the minimum and just, you know, like the letter that you see and you want to press send, you know, three minutes and you're done. You know, a couple more minutes to say, hey, I'm from, you know, Idaho. I'm from Nevada. I'm from Alaska whatever, um, you know, I support the mining industry, I want to see critical minerals produced, I want to see a site cleaned up, you know, you can add that kind of text in and maybe you'd spend five minutes on it. But it's really important because, you know, opposition type groups will, you know, are and will mobilize, you know, their, um, you know, membership to go out there and say negative things. And, you know, it's important the regulators hear both sides of the story. And it's often hard to, uh, to mobilize people who are supportive of something. It's much easier to mobilize people who are against something. So, you know, I just strongly encourage people, if you have any interest in the mining sector, and given that you're listening to this broadcast, you must do, you know, is take five minutes, go to countidahoin.com and, and submit a letter. And, um, you know, it will be good for your investment. It will be good for the mining sector, good for the economy of the U.S., and, and good for the environment. I'm always very critical of companies that do things the wrong way and try to make it a point to one, not support them and two, point them out. It's great to be behind a project that not only will be incredibly profitable for myself and subscribers and, and, and the state of Idaho, but also will actually make a site that's been long abandoned, lively once again, and I couldn't be happier um, to to support your team, Stephen, and the project. We'll put a link up again. That's www.countidahoin.com. Stephen, anything else that you'd like to add to that? 
No, I think I really appreciate the opportunity to say that. And, you know, I'll just reiterate that, uh, you know, it's worth spending three to five minutes on your, um, you know, on that comment letter and getting it in there because, you know, getting this project permitted will be the big driver for value. You know, projects that are unpermitted tend to trade at a, you know, 50 to 70% discount to the value of the project. Projects that are fully permitted tend to trade at least around the value of the project. And so, you know, there's a significant upside in seeing us through that um, final steps of permitting and comment period is a critical part of that process. And the regulators need to hear it. And again, final day to get that letter in is October the 28th, correct? That's correct. So I try and get it in no later than the 27th to make sure it's in there. (laughs) Fantastic. Stephen, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks very much, Gerardo, and thanks for the support.